Welcome to my channel. Please like, comment, and subscribe. In this video, we are going to talk about the Merchant Marine or Jones Act of 1920. Once you sail out of Houston and leave the national boundaries of the United States, even if you are a U.S. citizen employed by U.S.-based company on a ship registered in the U.S., some laws designed for your protection no longer apply. Fortunately, other laws move into play that restore some of those protection, but in a different manner. One such law in the Merchant Marine Act is an expansive uh, law that includes regulation governing maritime commerce in U.S. waters between U.S. Port Section 27 of Merchant Marine Act, known as the Jones Act, requires that commerce between U.S. ports be transported only by American-built vessels. The Merchant Marine and the Jones Act are often used synonymously, but in actuality, the Jones Act is a part of the Merchant Marine Act. The Jones Act also includes provisions that have a seafaring workers right at its core. Those provisions include, among many others, the owner of the vessel must use reasonable care to maintain it for safety and seaworthiness. The owner can be found liable if it is found negligence and the negligence led to an injury. Qualifying sailors officially classified as seamen who have suffered injuries or illness while at sea can recover appropriate compensation from their employers. By lawsuit, if necessary, the notion of a vessel's seaworthiness is extremely important, as it can move a case from one where the best outcome would be recovery of basic uh, expenses called maintenance and cure to one where the best outcome would be the recovery of a basic expenses called maintenance and cure to one where all the victims losses are reco recoverable and then what is a seaman the major provision of the Jones Act applied to a specific class of worker called a seaman it is a legal recognition and a very important to the process when injury claims are filed. But there is no binding definition of a seaman anywhere in the Jones Act or the Merchant Marine Act. There is precedent, uh, however, that maritime attorneys for both sides have to sort through past uh, cases to determine if the plaintiff qualifies as a seaman simply being employed by one of Houston's many shipping companies and spending time out at sea working that job is not enough to qualify as a seaman. In view of a legal definition, most maritime lawyers and judges typically agree on the following definition, but the definition has undergone a metamorphosis of terminology over the years, and it is still subject to revision. That is nice and tidy and a refinement of more cumbersome definition that precedes it but the Jones Act sets a progress back a bit, uh, insisting that to qualify as a seaman, a worker must spend at least 30% of his or her time on board out at sea. It is a point upon which the opposing sides in an admiralty case can argue with uh, for hours. Without an overarching definition to go by, however, it often becomes a stumbling block to the process. If you don't qualify as a seaman, Longshore and Harbor Workers Compensation Act, workers who do not satisfy the term for the definition of a seaman can still recover damages from the Longshore and Harbor Workers Compensation Act or LHWCA. This federal law allows the injured party to recover losses for medical expenses, lost wages, rehabilitation, etc. due to an injury as well as survivor's benefit if the injury causes the worker's death. This covers dock workers, shipbuilders, and harbor construction workers who are injured in the wharf area of the harbor. The provision of the LHWCA differ from standard workmen com uh, compensation laws and generally provide the slightly better compensation, making a case for negligence. Without the safety net of workmen's compensation, maritime employees often have to rally on the provision of the Jones Act for compensation. 
In a few ways, maritime workers actually have a better system at their disposal, which is why contacting a maritime injury lawyer is of utmost importance when an injury has occurred. With the provision of the Jones Act to rally upon, maritime workers can file negligence lawsuits that go beyond the standard maintenance and cure for certain types of injuries. They can receive a more substantial settlement when they file a negligence suit and only have to prove that the employer's negligence merely contributed to the injury in some way. In other words, the negligence does not have to be entire reason for the injury, it can actually play a very small role to be relevant. Employers can contend that maritime workers must acknowledge uh, the substantial, substantial inherent risk of working uh, aboard a seagoing vessel, but that doesn't absolve the employer or ship owner of liability when something goes wrong. Employers are expected to build and maintain the ship to coach, make repair as needed, and provide a safe work environment. Reasonable care must be exercised and they must foresee potential for mishap and take steps to eliminate them. Negligence is not limited to the way the ship is maintained. Sometimes, decisions that put workers at unreasonable risk must be held to accountability, requiring workers to perform tasks in unsafe sea conditions, forego safety procedures, perform tasks for which they have not been trained, or to stray from accepted practices regarding seagoing cargo are just a few examples of conduct that can be considered negligence. And then types of maritime injury cases. Maritime workers face situation and endure condition that would send most landowners uh, into the state of fear and despair. Well, for the most part, uh, they understand the hazard they are exposed to and have a various ways of coping with them and minimizing the risk accident to do happen. Among the most common injury producing accidents suffered by maritime workers are slips and falls. Solidly number one in injuring claims in wet conditions, slips are common and occur on stairwells, on decks and even crew areas. Bumps and collisions, swinging booms, cranes, dollies, charts, messing and unsecured cargo can bash into waters. Lifting and carrying mishaps, a tilting deck in a rolling seas can make lifting heavy object treacherous under even under the idle uh, what is that, condition. Heavy lifting is a risky endeavor. Illness, not every claim is due to an injury. Sometimes crew members become ill due to unsanitary condition and improper food preparation. When the ship is out to sea and injured workers only medical option is uh, the onboard medical staff, also known as the inti, infirmary, or sick by, this can be a real asset or pose a real risk if the personal or inadequate train. In extreme cases, a transport helicopter might be needed, but weather and sea condition can play a role in whether a helicopter can be dispatched. And then filing your maritime claim that don'ts. An injury at sea is almost always breaking news around the ship. It is impossible to keep something like that a secret, but regardless of the severity of the injury or the manner in which it occurred, it is vital to maintain a grasp of the fact because ultimately, it is up to you to set the record straight on what happened. As word of your injury reaches a management, they will naturally want to talk to you. Be very, very careful of what you say. If you anything, uh, while you don't want to be rude or uncooperative, you must protect your interests. And by all means, do not submit to a recorded statement. You cannot be compelled to provide a recorded statement at any point in the process. Your compensation, if you decide uh, to contact a maritime lawyer and file a claim, will be tied directly to the dredge to which the employer or ship owner is negligence, insurance company adjuster, and the attorneys on their side are masters of manipulation. And anything uh, you say prior, uh, don't sign any documents, approve any settlement offers, or sign any settlements without consulting to a maritime attorney. And then filing your claims, maritime, uh, maritime claims. This is the dues. Do however fill out an accident report part of the claims process. The difference here is if when you file out an accident report, you are in control, you have time to ponder your answer and clearly establish the facts about being put on the spot, trying to answer trick question. Get the names of any co-workers or witness who saw the accident or perhaps even notice 
uh, a hazard that might have contributed to your injury. Go thank you, Martin Moyer. I think that's all guys the information that I can share to you. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give a like, comment, and subscribe. Bye, see you in another video guys.